Okay folks, um, I'm now going to be using the Chinese uh, treadmill motor. Um, the flywheel unfortunately is different to the previous one. So this is for the Mark III turbine. So I've got to weld more spokes onto the flywheel and mount the existing blades onto the new spokes. This is the way in which I'm marked out the 120 degree angle. Um, we've just got a protractor which I got from the web printed onto a piece of paper extended on all sides and sellotaped together. Now the engineers amongst you might be thinking very rough and ready but the whole purpose of some of these videos is to show how you can uh, quickly and easily produce something to a reasonably high standard uh, without too much complexity. Okay so next is to weld the spokes on. Okay so here we see the um, flywheel and the spokes set up for welding lying outside on a piece of what I hope is reasonably flat wood lying on top of the protractor and lined up with the marks that I made earlier so this is the existing treadmill um, cast flywheel and some inch square marred steel tube which I think as I've said before if you're going to weld marred steel to cast um, just be careful with what you're doing. It's certainly strong enough for this application. You've just got to be very careful of brittle welds. There we are. For the welding job, I'm using a small 100 amp uh, MIG. Bought second hand off eBay for less than 50 pounds. I think it was 45. Um, these SIP MIG mates are a bit renowned for the wire not feeding properly and um, the rollers spinning on the wire. However, one thing I have noticed with this is that if you upgrade from the small reels by an adapter and put a large reel of wire on there, it appears to largely cure the problem, which is, um, which is slightly odd. Let's just try and give it a quick blast. And there we are, it's off. Nice uniform feed of the wire. Now if that was a small reel, I'd have a lot more problems. Interesting potential solution for you, for anyone out there with a um, SIP MIG mate. And here we have the finished part. It's actually the following day. Welding's not fantastic, but it's strong. That's the main thing. And the reverse side has been welded and then ground off flush um, because the blades are going to fit on here. That's it, next thing to do is drill some holes and a uh, quick coat of paint. Here we are, holes are drilled. These are 10mm uh, holes for an out 10 high tensile bolt. Check the clearance is alright. Yep. And they're lined up reasonably well. Yep. Okay, obviously the actual bolts are going to be shorter than that that I'm going to use. Fantastic. Reasonably basic working conditions, but that's one of the points behind these uh, videos. Is to um, see what you can do with sort of limited resources and uh, equipment. Okay, coat of paint next. On the blades themselves. Um, what I've done with two of them, one of them the hole positions are just drilled straight through. The other two have a slotted hole at the top. This is so that I can measure the centre or between the tips of the blades, between that tip and that tip for example. And then the other tip and make sure it's the same distance between them all to give a reasonable sense of balance. Because these are very lightweight blades because they're, they're PVC, um, that appears to be good enough. Um, they don't hang in any one direction once they're balanced up like that. So there we are, just thought I'd quickly show you that while it's off. The bottom hole isn't ovaled, because obviously if the bottom hole's ovaled, ovaled you've got far more leverage on the bottom hole than the top one. Alright, okay, okay, quick video from up the pole. Of course, don't do this at home. This is my choice, not something I'd recommend. Okay. You can see the original mounting for the motor because it was mounted straight on um, without any furling ability. 
so I quickly modified it and moved the motor to 120mm to the right and added the furling tail. Here it is. This probably isn't as strong as it could be. Um, there's a little bit of bounce in the whole thing. But it's held together for the last four months up here in the wind. So I don't see a sub substantial problem with it. Um, and again, here we are. At the top of the pole. There's the uh, top bearing. Right, so this motor's going to come off and the new one is going to go on. OK, now I've got the old motor off the uh, turbine. It's the first time I've had a chance to get these side by side. Um, that label's getting a bit worn. It should say uh, 180 volts DC, 7.5 amps, 3,700 RPM. Um, 1100 watts. This one is, you can see it quite clearly, 4000 RPM, 7 amps, 1.7 horsepower, 180 volts, but there is an awful lot of difference in the size of the two, as we can see. Similar spec, the diameter of the one that's going up there is about 30% up on the existing one. Hence the difference in performance that I've been seeing when it was spun up with a drill. Interesting. It's also an awful lot heavier, which is making a bit, me a bit nervous um, about the structure that it's sitting on. So I think it might be time to get the welder out and bung a few extra welds on there. Okay, okay here we have the, uh, the new larger motor mounted to the bracket from the old motor, which is the original treadmill fitment. You know, so I did actually have to redraw this hole because it was out of alignment, but other than that, job's nice and sturdy. I've also used aluminium tape to seal up anywhere where water can come in but leaving a little bit of cooling when the motor's under load. So I've got aluminium tape which is very handy stuff covering up the top half of the motor. The holes at the bottom are actually level with the casing so in the event that um, water should get in there it should just run straight out again and the commutator's well above that level. Okay, All right let's get it back on the turbine. Motor remounted. Right, I'm going to bung some welds on here because this wasn't anywhere near strong enough to hold the size of motor. I'm going to weld these two together. Some weld in there, some in there, same on the other side. And I don't think this existing welding is going to be enough. So to get this up and running quickly, I'm just going to weld a big plate washer in there to give it more support forwards. Okay quick recap on the furling tail. There it is. Okay, let's get welding because it's uh, getting dark. Okay, here we are. Uh, little plates welded in there just to give some reinforcement. A couple of welds as described in the previous clip. That's it, motor remounted, shroud on. Um, shroud's a four inch piece of pipe that's split in the bottom just to cover the motor. Okay, and there she is. Open on the bottom, I never like thing, things having uh, been completely sealed. Simply because if stuff gets in there it's got nowhere to drain out. That right, seems to have done the job of the last motor and kept the majority of rain off it. Large overhang at the back, so if you've got wind blowing, if you've got wind, the rain coming in at sort of 30, 40 degrees, you've still got enough coverage. OK, that's it. Next thing to do is get it back up on the pole. Looking at this, um, it's been modified quite a few times now. The furling tail's been added because the motor was mounted straight, as I previously said, and then offset to one side. I've now had to weld other bits in to strengthen it, so really it could do with rebuilding, but based on the principles here. So uh, I'll probably sketch something up. Right, back on the pole. She's nearly ready to fly again. Um, you can see the advantage of this type of stand. This is just about a one-man job to let that down. 
I'm resting it on the step ladders and then to get it up it's a combination of pulling on one of the guy ropes and yanking on the leg that's sticking up in the air to tilt it back up I'll try and get that on video in a second okay folks um, she's gonna go back up it's a bit more windy than I wanted today to do this um, and I'm doing it on my own not recommended of course uh, so if this goes wrong this will be um, a bit more of a YouTube uh, comedy video or disaster video let's see what happens shall we